Hi there, welcome to my tutorial on being able to solve simultaneous quadratic equations. We're going to be using the substitution method. The reason I'm doing this is because we've got quadratic, or we've got a, an equation here with squares in. Um, if that's the case, we need to use the substitution method in order to solve this. If you've just got two linear equations, then you could use the substitution method or also the elimination method. So have a look at the video on solving by using the elimination methods. So here we go, EG1 then. What we've got, we've got our two equations. Let's just label that one and that one too. The first one's linear. The second one here, well that's the equation of a circle, um, but it's got two squares in it. Now, we've got five steps for this. The first step we're gonna do is we're going to rearrange. So we're going to rearrange this equation, the simplest one, so we've got it in terms of either x or y, or we've got x or y as the subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the x there, and I'm going to write this as x equals 3 minus y. I've just taken the y over to the other side, and it becomes a minus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute my expression for x that I've just found out into the other equation. So the second step would be to substitute into other equation. So I'm going to put this value in place of x. So I get y squared plus, now I'm going to put in my 3 minus y, but of course it's got to be squared. But then that equals 5. Now this needs expanding here, so I've got to expand this bit. So if I just do this over here, 3 minus y squared is 3 minus y times 3 minus y. Now you could do that in your head, I'm going to work it out for you. So 3 3 is a 9. 3 times minus y is minus 3y. Minus y times 3 is also minus 3y. And minus y times minus y is a positive y squared. So simplifying that, I get 9 minus 6y plus y squared. That can now go in place of 3 minus y squared here. So I've got y squared plus, and then I've got 9 minus 6y plus y squared equals 5. The next step for this would be to set up an equation here. So 3 would be set up equation. Now because we've got a quadratic here, we're going to add the 2y squareds together. That's going to give us 2y squared. We've got the minus 6y and then we've got the plus 9 and that equals 5. When I say set up an equation, it's a quadratic. Quadratics need to be equal to 0 in order to solve them. So I'm now going to take this 5 over to the other side to leave me with 2y squared minus 6y. Take the 5 away and I've got plus 4 equals 0. Now I've got my quadratic equation. Step 4 would be to solve it. So I'm now going to solve this. Um, I could divide all this through by 2 to make it a little bit easier. So if I divide each term by 2, 2y divided by 2 is, sorry, 2y squared divided by 2 is y squared, minus 6y divided by 2 is minus 3y, and of course 4 divided by 2 is just 2, and 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Now I've got very simple quadratic. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give 2 and add to give negative 3, well, I can have 1 and 2, but that would add to give positive 3, so they both need to be a negative. So my two numbers are negative 1 and negative 2, because those add to give the negative 3. So put that 
factorize that, I've got y minus 1 and y minus 2 equals 0. Now it's just a case of solving these. So if we solve these, we've got y minus 1 equals 0. So y is going to equal either 1, y minus 2 equals 0, or y is going to equal 2. OK, of course, this is a simultaneous equation. So we've got our y results, but we still need our results for x. So our last step is going to be to sub back values into either the first or second equation. I've got my values now for y. There's two of them. I now need to sub that back into the first one here because it's a lot easier to put it back into the first one rather than the second one. More complicated equation. So start off when y equals 1 x is going to equal, we'll put 1 in place of there, 1 plus what gives you 3? 1 plus 2 gives you 3. But when y equals 2, 2 plus what gives you 3? Well, 2 plus 1 is going to give you 3. So our answers, when y is 1, x is 2. When y is 2, when, sorry, when y is 2, x is 1. OK, let's move on now and have a look at the second one. Now, this one's slightly more complicated than question one. So we're going to use the same procedure. We've got our five steps over there. Step one, we're going to rearrange. So we're going to make, uh, this time we're going to make y the subject. So y is going to equal 8 plus 3x. If we take the negative 3x over, it becomes a positive 3x. I'm then going to substitute this value here, or this expression, into the second equation. So I'm going to replace the y here with 8 plus 3x. So we get 2x squared minus, I'm going to put a circle around that, I'll explain that in a minute, 8 plus 3x squared equals 17. Now the reason I put the circle around there is to remind me that I need to take away 8 plus 3x. Once I've expanded this, I'm going to have three values there, three terms. They all need to be taken away from the 2x squared. So let's expand it then. So 8 plus 3x times 8 plus 3x. It's going to give us 64 plus 24x plus another 24x plus 9x squared. If I simplify the 24x's, group those together, I'm going to have 48x plus 9x squared. So this is my expression that now replaces the 8 plus 3x squared. 2x squared minus, and now I put my 64 plus 48x plus 9x squared equals 17 into it. But each of these terms, <coughs> excuse me, each of these terms form this. So each of these must be taken away. So what I would now do is change these. It's negative 64. That's negative 48x. And that becomes negative 9x squared equals 17. Common mistake would be to do 2x squared take away 64, but leave these as positives. So we're now going to tidy this up a little bit. So we've got 2x squared take away 48x, um, <coughs> take away 9x squared equals 17. I'm now going to group the terms together. 2x squared take away 9x squared leaves me with negative 7x squared. I have also got the negative 48x. If I then take the uh, 17 over with the 64, I end up with minus 81. And that's now going to give me 0. So what I now want to do, I don't want these as negatives. I'm going to now make these positives. Now, you can either think of that as moving all these over to the other side and the 0 over to this side, or multiplying this by negative 1. So if you times it by negative 1, you get 7x squared 
plus 48x plus 81, and that equals 0. We've now got a quadratic, we're going to factorise it. So we want to multiply the first number by the last number, that's going to give me 567. We're now looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 567 and that add to give us 48. That's going to be 21 and 27. We now split our 48x into 21 and 27, so I get 7x squared plus 21x plus 27x plus 81 equals 0. Put the 21 next to the 7 because it factorises better and the 27 next to the 81 because that will factorise with the 81. So now let's factorise in pairs. What occurs in both? It's 7x. What do I multiply 7x by to give me 7x squared? Well, that's just x. And what do I multiply 7x by to give me 21x? Well, that's going to be just 3. What occurs in both? Well, 27 does. And I'm going to multiply 27 by x to give 27x. And I'm going to multiply 27 by 3 to give me 81. Of course, these two values inside the brackets must be the same. If they're not, you've done something wrong. We now just write 7x plus 21, 27, sorry, the numbers are outside the brackets in one set. And x plus 3 in the other set. They all equal 0 there. I'm now going to uh, solve these, let's rub this out, so now what I've got is I've got 7x plus 27 equals 0, if I take the 27 over to the other side I'm going to end up with 7x equals minus 27 and then divide by 7 I'm going to get x equals minus 27 over 7. And, of course, my other value for x is pretty straightforward. I just take the negative 3 over to the other side. So I get, sorry, the 3 over to the other side, I get negative 3. There are my two values now for x. But, of course, again, I've got to find my y values. Put both of these back into the simplest equation, which is the first one. So I'm going to start off with the negative 3 in place of my x. So the first bit will become, let's just do these over here y minus 3 times negative 3 equals 8. Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, so I've got y plus 9 equals 8. If I take the 9 over, I'm going to get y equals negative 1. And then the second one, I've got to put negative 27 over, 20, over 7 into that. So this time I'm going to have y minus 3 times negative 27 over 7 and that is going to equal to 8. So here we've got y, well negative 3 times negative 27 is going to give me negative 81 so I've got, uh, sorry positive 81 so that becomes positive 81 over 7 and that equals to 8. Well, 81 over 7, well, that's going to be 11 and 4 sevenths equals 8. And then, of course, I've got to take that away. So, y is going to equal, well, 8 take away 11 is going to give me minus 3, but if I take away the other four sevenths, that's going to give me negative three and four sevenths, which actually gives me my final answer. Well, y is going to equal three times seven is 21 plus the four. That's going to give me negative 25 over seven.